Hi everybody! From pups that were originally trained to hunt lions to majestic protectors that herd livestock, here are nine of the best guard dog breeds in the world. Bull Mastiff Bull Mastiffs are large dogs, weighing up to 130 pounds, and they put this weight to good use in protecting their families. In fact, they were pretty much bred to guard those that they cared for, but the combination of this breed's appearance, including its ears and deep eyes, make it clear that you're looking into an intelligent animal. These factors mean that you can rely on a bull mastiff to keep your family safe. They have come to be known as the gamekeeper's night dog, and for good reason. In the 19th century, these dogs were bred to protect the land around huge aristocratic mansions which often contained lots of game. This made them the prime target for poachers. The bull mastiff was the perfect combination to scare these poachers away. Given that they were bred to keep others out, they can be a little fearful and aloof around strangers, but they're so relaxed around their families that they're even well poised to be a guard dog for an apartment. Crazy to think that a dog this big could do so well in an apartment, huh? Staffordshire Bull Terrier if you need a great guard dog but you just don't have enough room for one of the bigger breeds, then the Staffordshire Bull Terrier is definitely the dog for you. They tend to only clock in at around 40 pounds, but if you look at them, you can see that they're built with an incredibly muscular frame. You might even call them buff. But if you look into its puppy dog eyes, then you'll know you have a friend for life. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier has a pretty rough history, however, during the 18th and early 19th centuries, dog fighting was pretty popular around England, people would go to these fights and bet on which dog would win. These gamblers bred together bulldogs and various terriers to create the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, which is a pretty fearless breed. Thankfully, they made it through the years and were further bred with care to create a very loving puppy. But that doesn't mean that they did away with all of their admirably athletic traits. They're still very courageous, but they're more frisky than combative nowadays, even if they look like they're gym rats. They've also learned to trust and love people over the years, and they're super friendly with kids. And now for number 7, but first, do you have any of these breeds? Tell me about your dog in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Pulley You'd never think it, but the heavily dreaded Pulley breed is actually super effective as a guard dog. However, the first thing you're inclined to notice when you look at them are those luscious locks of corded hair. In fact, when they're sitting down, they look more like a mop than a dog. However, given the Pulley's history, these dogs are excellent at working together with humans toward a common goal, so they're great as guard dogs. The Pollock, plural for Pulley, have been around for quite some time. Most experts think that a nomadic group from Asia named the Magyars brought the breed to Europe from their home, and these dogs were integral to the Magyars' living arrangements. The Pollock were bred to herd sheep around the plains of Hungary. But it gets pretty cold in Hungary, hence the development of their heavy coat of hair. This coat is actually distinctive among all dog breeds. Their undercoat is a heavy layer meant to keep them warm, whereas their outer coat of hair is shaggy and dreads after they grow up. But these pups aren't out to impress anyone, because they know they're good at what they do. Through years of developing their herding skills and intelligence, they'll make an excellent addition to your home and will guard it well. Boxer Boxers are some of the most beloved dogs in the world. They're known for their spirited and bubbly personalities, and I would say they're quite handsome pups. But don't underestimate them on the basis of their qualities. They're also incredibly loyal and willing to do anything for their facilities. They're, since they're so jolly and loyal, they're recognized as being some of the best dogs for kids. They know how to keep everyone safe. In terms of their history, boxers are pretty young. Some estimates place their origins at somewhere around the beginning of the 20th century. They were bred by German dog breeders from a bigger breed named Bullenbeiser, which is German for bullbiter, since they were often used to hunt big animals like bison in aristocratic hunting games. But thankfully, at least we got the sleeker and kinder boxer out of these games. The boxer has some other positive qualities to boot. They're pretty easy to take care of, requiring very little in the way of grooming. Their affectionate qualities also extend outside of their families. They're pretty people-loving, unless they're threatened. However, they don't respond well to overly severe training, so make sure to be gentle with them. They will listen and learn. Doberman Dobermans look sharp. When they notice that something's going on, they'll perk their ears straight up into the air. This lets you know they are completely aware of their surroundings. And what's more, they can take this awareness and combine it with their large, muscular frames to protect their families. That's why these Doberman pinchers are known worldwide for being excellent guard dogs. Dobermans were initially bred by a German man named Louis Doberman, a tax collector in Apolda. Since people didn't take too kindly to having their taxes collected, Louis decided it might be in his best interest to breed a dog to protect him on his roots. And wouldn't you know it, he accomplished his task, breeding the Doberman into the dog that we all know and love today. 
Now, they don't only guard tax collectors, but everyone else. They're used both in therapy and in various workforces. Since they were bred to protect particular people, these dogs are excellent guard dogs, but this also means that they have a lot of pent-up energy, meaning that if you're going to get one, you'll need to keep it active, and they'll try to take over the role as the household leader if you aren't careful. Make sure to train them well from the get-go. Akita Akitas are pretty big dogs, sometimes weighing up to 130 pounds. Moreover, their heavy coats of fur make them look even bigger than their already muscular frames would suggest. But Akitas are gentle giants. In fact, in their native homeland of Japan, they're regarded as quite dignified creatures. Indeed, the combination of size, strength, and softness has made them something of a national symbol of courage and work ethic. Akitas have also been around for a long time. They were initially bred sometime around the beginning of the 17th century. As the story goes, the emperor forced an aristocrat into exile in the Akita region. When he arrived, he commanded his underlings to breed a dog for hunting purposes. Through generations of breeding, the Akita came into being. They were good at hunting and did so with attention to detail, often going after boars and occasionally even Yezo bears. Although they were once for royals only, people now know them all over the world, but they still have a distinctive rank for the Japanese. Because of their dignified, fearless nature, combined with their predisposition to hunting, they make excellent family guard dogs. However, know what you're getting into. They shed and drool a lot, and they aren't immediately kind around strangers, but they love their families to death. Rhodesian Ridgeback The Rhodesian Ridgeback was originally bred to hunt after lions, so it's no wonder that they're so adept at protecting their families from harm. But that's not the only thing that these pups have going for them. Most people recognize the Ridgeback based on the fact that they have a large ridge running down their backs. These dogs are also well known for their athletic frames. If you're going to get one of these, be prepared to keep up with them. The Rhodesian Ridgeback was originally bred in Africa as a mix between a few European hunting breeds and a Khoi Khoi breed which was native to the area. These forces combined led to a breed well adapted to its environment. Not only could it navigate the African terrain without falling prey to its various pests, but it had the hunting instincts to track down whatever was in its way. Because of this, these dogs were put to use in hunting down, but not killing, large game such as lions, bears, and boar. Nowadays, you're not going to see these dogs taking on game like that, although they definitely still have the drive in them. They're very happy with their families and will guard them at all costs, but they still have a free spirit and a tendency to chase after things. But aside from this, their history makes them simultaneously protective and amenable to their family's commands. But only get one if you know what you're doing. They can have a mind of their own. German Shepherd If you're like me, then one of the first dogs that comes to mind when you think about protection is the German Shepherd. This is definitely no mistake. They've been the quintessential police dog for decades, and it seems that they're heavily predisposed to protecting others, especially their families. They're also quite renowned for being one of the smartest dog breeds in the world. The breed has pretty humble beginnings. German Shepherds descended from a group of German dogs whose purpose was to herd sheep. However, these breeds were pretty disparate from one another. However, in the late 1800s, a group of breeders worked together to breed the German Shepherd. You'd think that the German Shepherd had to go through a bunch of police training to earn its reputation, but actually it got it from herding sheep. But over and above their intelligence and strength, they are known to be incredibly loving towards their families, and even towards strangers. That's why they've been known to protect both the police and the family of which they are a part. In fact, they're so protective that they'll often go into a guarding mode when it's not even called for. But since they're so smart, if you train them to listen to what you say, they'll learn to respond quickly. Rottweiler Rottweilers are big, and they can be a lot for introductory dog owners to handle, but they're arguably the best breed of guard dog in the world. Given their original breeding purposes, their temperament makes sense. They were originally intended to herd cattle, and sometimes they were even enlisted to help butchers drive heavy carts. They were also some of the first dogs to work with police forces. Even though they've often been depicted in the media as angry and aggressive, most experts say that Rottweilers are super friendly, even if they can be a little bit skittish around other dogs and strangers. When they're with the families, they're eager to help out, and they love spending time with those that they know best. That might be why they're so good at protection. They're so attached to those that they love that they'll guard them at all costs. Rottweilers have held many roles over their long history. They've helped serve the blind, and during disasters, they've been essential at assisting rescue workers navigate dangerous sites such as during 9-11. You'd expect a dog with such great versatility to have split off into a few different breeds, but somehow the Rottweiler has stayed very much the same over its breeding history. And for good reason, these dogs are excellent at everything they do.
From big military vehicles that were fighting in the hardest battles to legendary sports cars, here are 10 cars found underwater. Jaguar MK2 Jaguars are elegant, luxury cars originally from the UK, and the Jaguar MK2 is a classic car that any serious car enthusiast would be more than thrilled to have in their garage. The Jaguar Mark II was first built in late 1959 to replace the 2.4 and 3.4 liter saloons known as MK1. MK2 was produced until 1967 and it gained a reputation as a good car for law enforcement and criminals also appearing in many films. One was found in absolutely atrocious condition back in 2019 when a scuba team pulled it out of the Willamette River. While it seems more like a commercial for diving gear, it was found by the guys over at the Adventures with Purpose YouTube channel. Nobody has any idea how long the Jaguar car had been sitting underneath the water near a boat ramp into the river, but it was successfully pulled from the water after a short struggle. However, it did not appear to be worth the effort as this once beautiful red sports car is now absolutely trashed. There is no way anyone is restoring this vehicle. It is rusted beyond repair, the interior is completely destroyed, the tires are ruined, and so are the wheel wells, and in order to get into the trunk, the team completely ripped it apart with a giant pry bar. Yes, this Jaguar MK2 is a beautiful car that got pulled out of a river, but I don't think anyone is ever driving this car again. If it were me, I think I would have just left it in the river to become a luxury house for some fish. What about you? Chevrolet Silverado this is a recent one, just a few months into 2020, and the Australian Maritime Safety Authority recovered almost a dozen shipping containers that had been accidentally dumped off of a vessel near the Australian coast in 2018. Among the relatively boring things discovered inside of the containers were a pair of Chevrolet Silverados. These big, heavy-duty diesels would have been sold in Australia, but after two years spent submerged in the extremely salty Pacific Ocean, I doubt there are going to be many buyers lining up, probably not even for a steep discount. And that is a real shame because these are some serious trucks. Chevy Silverados come with impressive Duramax engines and sell for around $134,000 brand new in the land down under. That is nothing to sneeze at. According to an Australian report, the trucks were on their way to be converted from left hand to right hand drive. It looks like they will be no hand drive now. There's not much that can be done to fix two years of severe water damage. You can barely fix a flooded engine, never mind a completely flooded truck. Still, this pair of trucks was a pretty cool find at the bottom of the sea. Red Jeep This is probably the most infamous vehicle ever discovered under the water, and it was not even that deep under the water. Back in Myrtle Beach during Hurricane Dorian, a red jeep became stuck in the sand and drew a whole lot of attention to it, with video footage and memes sprouting up almost instantly. The jeep became such a viral sensation that people quickly flocked to the beach to take photographs with it, even climbing onto the jeep while the storm began to close in, the waves becoming extremely dangerous and the police trying to shut down that area of the beach. But still, the people kept coming and the memes kept being shoveled onto the internet. There was even a point where a man came with a pair of bagpipes and played Amazing Grace as a funeral song for the Jeep. However, the Jeep did survive the night and did not end up being swept all the way out to sea. The actual owner of the red Jeep later came forward and claimed that his cousin had borrowed the vehicle in order to capture video of the sunrise before the storm, but ended up getting stuck. The Jeep was removed soon after the storm and the Myrtle Beach police even posted a photograph of the backhoe that had to drag the Jeep away. Ford Mustang Mach 1 and Mazda RX-7 This is a two-for-one special. You remember number 10 on the list? The guys who dragged the Jaguar MK2 out of the river? Well, these same guys lifted a Mazda RX-7 and a 1973 Ford Mustang Mach 1 out of another river, this time in Portland, Oregon. Supposedly, there had been rumors of a girl who dumped her boyfriend's car into that same river 20 years prior after she had caught him cheating on her. The story had been the motivation for the team to go down there, and much to their surprise, they ended up finding six vehicles submerged underwater. After being submerged for decades, it is safe to say the Mustang is never going to be restored. In fact, the only vehicle they managed to get out of the water was the Mazda RX-7, which was in pretty terrible shape. The windshield was smashed, the entire vehicle was full of muck and pretty much everything was ruined. Among their discoveries was also a Chevrolet LUV pickup truck, which they surmised could have belonged to the supposed cheating boyfriend. Nobody knows exactly why so many vehicles were dumped into the river in the same location, but it certainly makes for an interesting mystery. Why do you think those cars are underwater? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Military vehicles 
If you happen to be swimming off the coast of Aqaba, you will be surprised to discover an entire collection of underwater military vehicles spread along the ocean floor. There are approximately 19 decommissioned pieces of military hardware sitting 92 feet below the surface of the water, but they aren't there by mistake. They are part of Jordan's first underwater military museum, which includes tanks, a helicopter, and troop carrier vehicles all positioned in battle formation. Currently, they are all sitting patiently in the Red Sea. According to a report by the BBC, Jordan hopes this underwater collection of very cool military vehicles is going to intrigue visiting tourists as a new type of museum experience. Personally, I think it is a waste of perfectly good tanks that I could be driving around my neighborhood. But I will admit, discovering this awesome platoon of war machines in the murky darkness of the Red Sea is such an amazing experience, and that is why if you are at the Red Sea, you shall enjoy this fascinating opportunity. Motorcycle Trash Up north in Canada and Quebec, to be exact, local people were looking to reopen some swimming locations that had been previously closed for almost half a century. The problem was, too much trash. Scuba divers went down to the the bottom of the St. Lawrence River to try and remove junk as part of a massive cleanup operation that would get the riverbed free of garbage. According to local CTV News, 60 divers went down and worked for an entire day to clean this section of river and remove the trash. What they found on the bottom of the river was a gun, a lot of car tires, a pair of ice skates, a sign for a parking meter, and an entire motorbike. There was also a car down there, but it was too heavy for the divers to drag to the surface. But this isn't the first time a group of divers find a motorcycle underwater. For example, in 1941, the munition ship SS Thistlegorm was shipwrecked by a German bomber off the coast of Egypt during World War II and lay for decades. It was discovered some years ago, and now it has turned into a world-class diving site. This place is full of amazing machines, and it has well-preserved motorcycles, but the cherries on the top are a couple of rusting Horton 16H that now are home of many fish that swim through their twisted metal. Submarine Sports Car Okay, this is not a car that has been found underwater, but it absolutely needed to be on this list anyway. This is known as the submarine sports car. It is considered the only car on Earth that can drive perfectly underwater and perfectly on land. That's right, this car can literally drive along the bottom of a lake, river, or swimming pool, and it does so beautifully. This incredible sports car comes equipped with an electric motor that allows it to drive 75 miles per hour, 121 kilometers per hour, beneath the surface of the water. That's faster than a lot of vehicles can go on land. I can see why it costs 2 million US dollars. The car itself was inspired by the Sub Lotus from the 1977 James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me, and it looks amazing. The sports car is a convertible two-seater that acts just like a proper car when it's on the road, but floats the second it hits water, then by by switching the lever, the car sinks below the water with you and your passenger safely connected to oxygen. The scuba tanks that are integrated into the car allow two people to breathe underwater for up to one hour. Talk about a joyride. Obviously, I see some pretty big issues with this car, like what happens if you can't drive back to the surface before your oxygen runs out? But this is more of a novelty than anything, and besides, I'm sure one day the submarine sports car will be stranded at the bottom of the ocean somewhere. What do you say? Would you like to drive it? Where would you go in this car? Let me know in the comments below. Volkswagen Beetle This one is a little different. Rather than a car being found mysteriously under the water, this Volkswagen Beetle sculpture was lowered there on purpose to become the newest exhibit of a renowned artist's underwater art museum in Cancun, Mexico. This Volkswagen sculpture can be found 26 feet, 8 meters, below the surface of the water near Isla Mujeres. The sculpture, which is an exact cement replica of the classic Volkswagen Beetle, has been designed specifically to have lots of nooks for marine life to live in thereby creating an artificial reef. This is definitely one of the coolest underwater cars that isn't exactly a car that you could ever see. According to the artist, this exhibition is supposed to be an artistic statement about the impact that humans and their technology have been having on our planet's ecosystems. And this is not the only sculpture found in the artist's underwater art museum. The same artist, named Jason DeCaris Taylor, has another 400 plus sculptures in Cancun's National Marine Park. But I have to say, there is only one Volkswagen Beetle sculpture, and it is definitely my favorite. I wonder what future humans will wonder when they discover this curious fossil 10,000 years from now. Train Wreck At the bottom of Lake Superior, along a rather remote stretch of the northern shore, a wreck was discovered unlike anything on this list. The wreck was from 106 years ago when a locomotive carrying a three-man crew went off track over the mountainside and crashed into the water. The locomotive then remained underneath the waves and was not discovered until just recently. 
The township of Schreiber was founded in the 1880s as the Canadian Pacific Railway was constructed across the South Zone off Ontario. This was an important place because it was a crew change point for trains. In 1910, a crew of three men joined the locomotive 694 of the CPR, who had to pass to the line right beside the Lake Superior. With a rock wall to the left and the lake to their right, the three-man crew found themselves bearing down on a rock slide dead ahead, strewn across the rails without a chance to avoid a crash. Even though they tried to escape, two of their bodies were found in the water, and the body of the fireman was never found. As you can imagine, the train car is in pretty rough condition. After over 100 years submerged, rust has taken its toll on this last locomotive, and while it cannot be raised to the surface as of yet, it was still a pretty amazing discovery for the local people of Lake Superior, as the story had developed into something of a myth over the last 100 years. Bugatti Type 22 Now let's travel to the Italian-Swiss border, where a 1925 Bugatti Type 22 Brescia Roadster was lifted from the water after 75 years submerged. As the story goes, the Bugatti had belonged to a grand Prick's driver, Rain Dreyfus, who supposedly lost it in a drunken poker match to a Swiss man in Paris in 1934. On his way home with his new car, the Swiss man was unable to pay the import duties at the Swiss border. Instead of paying the import costs, the Swiss man chose to walk away and leave the Swiss border officials with his prize. So what did they do with it? Because it wasn't an important model car, they rolled the Bugatti straight into Lake Maggiore, and there it rested under 173 feet 53 meters of water until it was brought to the surface just recently in 2009 for an honorable reason. In 2008, a local boy was killed at a street fair, so a foundation was established in the victim's name to combat youth violence. The local diving club elected to raise the sunken Bugatti and donate the proceeds to the foundation, and the Type 22 emerged from the lake in July of 2009. Even though one part of the car is still at the bottom of the lake, it was suitably prepped and sold for around $370,000. The buyer was Peter Mullen, the founder of the Mullen Automotive Museum in Oxnard, California. Today, the Bugatti is located in its own room, walled off from the rest of the collection. Its room is designed to replicate the sensation of being underwater in the lake, with the minimal light levels of its bottom helping a viewer concentrate on the details that make this car an actual must-see work of art. Thanks for watching. Which of these underwater vehicles did you find the most intriguing? Have you ever found a cool object under the water? Hi everybody! From whips that weigh just around 3 ounces to guns that you can hide as a cell phone, here are 10 of the craziest miniature tools and weapons. Yellow Jacket The Yellow Jacket is an actual iPhone case that has a secret alter ego. It doubles as a stun gun. This will definitely take aggressors by surprise. No one will ever be able to guess that your iPhone could knock them out, and no one will bat an eye either. It also works as a charger, so if you're already in the market for one of those, then you're in luck. It comes in a few colors, and it can administer a number of stunning blows on a single charge. Since it wraps around your phone, it's easily holdable in your hand, and you'll be able to easily access the stunning ability when the situation really requires it. And it definitely looks like a phone case. You can use this to administer somewhere around 50 zaps on a single charge. The new models also have a nifty feature. They reserve a bit of battery life just in case you need it. The company that makes them is also working on different weapons that you can attach to the case, so stay tuned for more info in the future. Cell phone pistol. Maybe a phone case isn't your thing. What other options do you have? Well, gunmaker Ideal Conceal has been working on a particularly concealed pistol that has the gun world abuzz. Their double-barreled 380 caliber doesn't look like a gun at all when it's folded up. Instead, it looks like a cell phone in an indiscriminate case. However, with the push of a single button, this thing will fold itself out and turn into a fully-fledged pistol. This thing hides itself in clear view. Everyone has a smartphone, so no attackers are going to guess that you're packing heat if they think you've got just a phone clip to your belt or even in your pocket. Its dimensions almost exactly match most regular smartphones on the market today, even though it's definitely heavier. That means that you can travel as you please without having to worry about danger around the corner. You'll be prepared. It's also pretty sleek to boot. Built in one frame, it unfolds with ease and is accurate all in one package. I'd bet that in the future, we're about to start seeing a lot more concealed weapons like this. And now for number 8, but first be sure to subscribe and let me know which one you would want to have in the comments below. Defender Ring 
If you want to stay fashionable and safe at the same time, then the Defender Ring is the thing for you. The Defender Ring is a self-defense ring, which means that it can be used as a weapon in bad situations. However, most of these rings are ugly and take up too much space, an obvious sign to attackers. But the Defender Ring just looks like a regular ring, so they'll never see it coming when you have this thing. This ring is even pretty stylish. You can get it as a sphere, flower, or sandblast, but all of them have one thing in common. When you take the head off of it, it reveals a sharp dagger-like point underneath that you can use to defend yourself. And you just can't beat the convenience of this thing. There's no fumbling around in your bag. Instead, you literally have the means to defend yourself at your fingertips. The company that makes these things is making more designs soon, so you can continue to stay safe while staying fashionable. Have you ever seen or used a self-defense ring before? Tell me about it in the comments. Atomic Bear SWAT Tactical Pen You never know when danger is going to arise, so it will probably do you some good to keep a self-defense tool on you at all times. That's what makes the Atomic Bear SWAT Tactical Pen such a lifesaver in dangerous situations. First off, this is not like carrying around a gun or a knife. Instead, when you're safe, you can use this thing as a regular pen without having to worry about freaking everyone around you out. But when danger comes knocking, this thing kicks into full gear. The head of this pen is made out of tungsten carbide, the same stuff used in armor-piercing bullets, and Atomic Bear claims that it can even crush the window of a car in two seconds flat. Given this pen's strength, assailants are not going to be happy that they messed with you. The body of this pen is made out of non-rusting aluminum, and it's super easy to handle. It's no sweat to switch between writing and defending yourself. People even say that it's a fantastic pen all on its own, so if you need something that you can use to defend yourself, I would definitely try to get my hands on this. Taser Pulse Plus Everybody knows about the Taser Gun. It's one of the most effective non-lethal weapons in the world. But have you ever heard about the Taser Pulse Plus? Because the Pulse Plus is definitely the future of self-defense. Not only is it a taser gun, but it's got a ton of new technology in it to boot. It can be shot from up to 15 feet away, and it's only 8 ounces. But the crazier thing is that it works together with an app called Noonlight. Anytime that you have to shoot your Pulse Plus, Noonlight is staffed 24-7 with employees who will send police or emergency responders to your area. That means that you're not alone whenever you have to use this. Moreover, the Pulse Plus is designed to administer a shock even if it only barely touches your attacker, so you don't have to fret about aiming with perfection in order to get the best out of this weapon. It's definitely the next big step in safety. Instafire Instafire is a product that is intended to help its users start fires, and it comes in tiny packages. The average package of materials comes in a 1.75 ounce baggie. Fire has captivated humanity ever since its discovery, and Instafire brings that sense of wonder into the contemporary world. Where the iPhone puts the power of the interest into your palms, Instafire puts the power of instant fire into your hands. Instafire burns easily due to its constitution. It consists of a number of flammable materials such as paraffin wax, volcanic rock, and, you guessed it, tiny bits of wood. It doesn't light on its own though, you'll need a match for that. But Instafire ensures that once you light it up, you'll be able to have a ripping fire in no time. First, you create a square of logs and put the Instafire in the middle, then put a flame to it. After that, you just add tinier pieces of wood on top, then add logs to your heart's content. Instafire ensures an easy way to start a fire every time, and it's easy to carry with you. Mini Revolvers it might be hard to believe, but there are miniature guns out there that are fully functional guns even though they can weigh just a fraction of a regular one. As it turns out, firearms company North American Arms specializes in these kinds of guns, and they have an entire lineup that you can choose from. Called mouse guns for their miniature nature, these guns are perfect for those who need something small enough to fit into your pocket. Crazily enough, when these guns don't have any rounds inside of them, they can weigh a mere 6 ounces. Their mini revolvers are probably their most popular option, and they come in a few flavors. 22 short, 22 long, 22 Winchester Magnum, and a 22 black powder. Each of these firearms is a unique version of their larger cousins. Take a look at the 22 LR, which while tiny on its own, can fold into itself to make it even safer and more compact. Reviewers agree that there is something special about North American Arms lineup of tiny guns. Just imagine having a 22 Magnum that could fit inside of your pocket no problem. Have you ever seen any of these guns in real life? Tell me about it in the comments. Tiger Lady The Tiger Lady is an inventive new kind of brass knuckle that's intended to be used by women to fend off attackers. 
Although it's pretty new on the scene, it was actually patented in 1978, but the clever thing about these brass knuckles is that they have a number of sharp claws inside of them that come out of the tool whenever you make a fist. So you can run around with these things and then make a fist when you need them the most. Obviously, this tool is incredibly useful, and it's also easy to manage. The tool itself hangs onto your wrist with a strap. If you need to use it, press your fingers down on them, and then you can scratch whoever is coming towards you. They definitely will disorient your attackers, and they're difficult to defend against. So if you're looking for a way to stay safe on a jog, this may be the tool for you. Bola Wrap 100 The Bola Wrap 100 is a miniature handheld device which is like a gun that can shoot a tiny lasso at assailants. Some have called them remote handcuffs, and that's a fitting name. The way that this thing works is that it shoots a tether made out of Kevlar at somewhere around 280 feet per second. Whenever it leaves the gun, it spreads out horizontally, making it big enough to wrap around the target a few times over, rendering them immobile. This is an excellent form of non-lethal restraint, and because of that, it's become increasingly popular with law enforcement. It means that they can subdue their targets without having to threaten them with a real gun, and it's super easy to use. It's only about as big as a remote, and it has a safety to prevent accidental shooting. It even has a laser pointer to make it easier to aim, and it's effective at a maximum of 25 feet, which is perfect for officers handling close quarter scenarios. They're about $800, so you can get one of these for yourself if you're interested. Given its range, it would be helpful for preventing attackers getting to you. Fast Strike Whip It would be useful to have a whip that you could carry around to defend yourself, but whips can get incredibly bulky. Until now. Fast Strike is a company that designs self-defense weapons that are meant to be deployed fast, and their whip is a perfect example of that philosophy. Fast Strike's whip is not very long, because carrying around a super long whip is not realistic, but it's around 13 inches long, which is the perfect length, especially when you can coil it around your pants and quickly reach for it when in harm's way. The whip itself also has a tip made of steel that can do some serious damage from a distance. In fact, even the length of the whip is made from stainless steel cable, so it's powerful while remaining pliable. Since the tip of the whip is made of steel, if you use the whip quickly and correctly, you can put a lot of force behind the steel and send your attackers running. Fast Strike claims that if you use this correctly, a flick of the wrist is all you need to really damage your attacker, but for maximum force, you need to put your shoulder into it. If you get one of these, aiming at the neck or face region is going to be your best bet. Moreover, since it's so tiny, it's very hard to grab. Thanks again for watching, everyone. What tool do you think would be the most useful in real life? Tell me about it in the comments. Hi everybody! From animals that we've been looking for for years to gigantic deep sea creatures that seem to pop up from nowhere, here are 10 of the weirdest creatures spotted on Google Earth. New Hominid Species Google Earth helped a group of scientists discover an entirely new species of hominids. In 2007, Dr. Lee Berger was pursuing Google Earth in the hopes of mapping new caves in the cradle of humankind, which is home to some of the biggest anthropological discoveries ever, including a ton of fossils of our ancestors. The images he messed with on Google Earth helped him find where some of these caves were. Whenever they arrived at the site of the caves, Berger's son found a set of ancient bones. A year later, they found further bones from the very same person. As it turns out, these bones came from a species that had not been discovered until Berger's son came upon them by accident. Now referred to as Australopithecus sediba, these hominids lived somewhere around 2 million years ago when humans were starting to come into existence. This species walked upright and had human features, but they had arms that were more like apes. Using these, they were able to climb through trees. However, they didn't have the brain power that humans have. They might be an ancestor of Homo erectus. It's pretty crazy to think that a discovery of this magnitude could have started by playing around on Google Earth. Giant Centipede Scotland might just be a hub for secret creatures. For one thing, they're well known to be the home of the Loch Ness Monster, but recently, one Google Earth image appeared to show an even crazier sight in Scottish waters. An apparently 360 foot long centipede underneath the water. If this were real, then it would be a monumental discovery. The biggest centipede currently on record is the Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede, which only gets to around 10 inches long. Naturally, people were pretty shocked to see this image, and the debate raged on for a while. Some claimed that it was real, because what else could be going on underneath those waters to cause that image? But others think that it is probably fake. It's more likely to be a shadow or just something wrong with Google Earth's cameras. 
Given that scientists haven't come out and said that the longest centipede is actually 360 feet long as opposed to 10 inches, it's safe to say it's fake. However, it's still a mystery what was going on in that photo. And now for number 8, but first be sure to subscribe to Taltanic if you are new here. Ninjen. In 2007, a Japanese paranormal outlet posted a picture that they'd retrieved from Google Earth of what appeared to be a ninjen in the flesh, right around Nambia's coast. A ninjen is a humanoid creature that hangs out in the waters of Antarctica, according to Japanese myths. They're a lot like us, ninjen means human, with two eyes, the same kinds of hands, but they're also alleged to have tails like mermaids. If this picture is accurate, then the ninjen could be about our size or even bigger, and other sightings have varied as to how big the ninjen they saw were. Some have even reported that they can get up to 90 feet long. One sighting a few years back by a Japanese ship showed an alleged ninjen around Antarctica. They're typically only spotted around very cold waters, and even then, only at night. Who knows for sure whether or not the ninjen is real, but it has yet to be debunked, so it's definitely something to think about. Loch Ness Monster One man from Nottingham, England, named Jason Cook, claims to have discovered the Loch Ness Monster on Google Earth. Loch Ness Monster has been one of the most highly sought after creatures on Earth, and every year more and more people come out of the woodwork to claim that they've seen it. But rarely do people come out and say that they found it on Google Earth. Apparently, these folks didn't even need to leave their house. Take a look at these pictures for yourself. You can see that it doesn't look much like what we'd expect the Loch Ness Monster to look like. In fact, it looks a lot like a boat, but no one knows for sure. Maybe the Loch Ness is just a big, white creature rather than a black one. Google Earth has shot down the idea that their application has made big discoveries. For instance, when someone claimed to have found Atlantis through Google Earth a few years back, they explained that it was incorrect. But in this case, they've only said that they can't say for certain whether or not this is the Loch Ness Monster. So maybe time will tell if the Loch Ness actually looks different than we previously thought. Lost Forest Thanks to images from Google Earth, scientists were able to discover a massive rainforest mask from plain sight inside of Mount Liko, a volcano in Mozambique. You'd think that this is the kind of thing that we would have known about for a long time, but it took serious technological advances in order to make this crazy possibility a reality. It's a world that's been separated from ours for millennia. In fact, it's actually the second time that scientists have discovered rainforest separated from the world due to Google Earth. It happened once before, around 2005 when Dr. Julian Bayliss discovered one inside of Mount Meibu in the same region because of Google Earth images. So Bayliss was naturally pretty excited when their team discovered yet another rainforest. On this new journey into Lico, they've already gotten their money's worth in the form of new kinds of butterflies and an entirely new kind of mouse. They definitely found weird things in Meibu, like the ghost slug, but because Lico is even more isolated, they have high hopes that they'll find crazy things here. Kraken in Antarctica For ages, Norse mythology has spoken about the existence of the Kraken, which is pretty much a humongous squid that could tear passing sailors apart. It might seem mythical, but some recent images from Google Earth have brought this myth back into the real world. Take a look at these astounding pictures, which conspiracy theorists are claiming show that there is a huge Kraken lurking out there around Deception Island in the Antarctic waters. If these images are accurate and do indeed depict a squid, then it would have to be around 360 feet long. Can you even imagine a squid that's bigger than a football field? What's more, it looks like it's making quite a stir in those waters, stirring up the surface of the water as if it's saying, I'm here, I'm real, get used to it. However, this photo was debunked pretty soon after the conspiracy theorists started circling around it. The coast off of Deception Island is renowned for its rocky terrain, and researchers have identified this rock as Sail Rock. It matches up with the maps of the area, so there's probably no kraken in these waters, but it definitely looks like it. Corfu Island Sea Monster It's not every day that you discover a sea monster while you're on a cruise, but that might be exactly what happened for Harvey Robertson, whose picture of a seemingly mythical creature has been making the rounds on social media. While he was sailing with his family on a cruise around Parga, one of the Greek islands, he thought the color of the water was beautiful. However, when he took another look at the photo, he was stunned. The photo shows a picture of what appears to be a gigantic manatee-like creature. In one picture, the creature seems to be jumping out, and then in the next, it's jumping back in. Of course, this caused quite a stir among animal experts who claim that it was everything from a whale to the strange offspring between crocodiles and hippos. However, most people think that there is a much simpler explanation. Dr. Darren Naish, for example, contends that the creature is actually just a piece of a fender that broke off from a boat sailing through the water. 
While this is entirely plausible, it is still only a theory, so there may yet be something out there in those waters. Crabzilla In 2014, the Sunday Express posted a story about the presence of a large crab inside of the shallow water directly off a pier in Whitstable. It was sent to them by Quentin Winter off the website Weird Whitstable. Quentin thought it was just sand at first, but then he said that he thought he'd seen it when he visited Whitstable the summer prior. He recounted the incident in pretty terrifying detail. If the picture is accurate, then the crab would have to be somewhere around 50 feet long. That's 38 feet longer than the Japanese spider crab, which is regarded worldwide as the biggest crab out there. However, Paul Clark, a crab expert at the Natural History Museum in London, has looked at the pictures and he determined that they were fake. He said it was clearly a shore crab that was photoshopped beyond its, at most, 2 inch length. Plus, the photo came from a Bing Maps photo without a crab. I mean, what do you think? Let me know. Bigfoot is arguably the most sought after mysterious creature known to man. Do you believe Bigfoot is out there? A Canadian in British Columbia claims to have evidence of his existence. The video was posted by Wow For Real, a YouTuber who is an extensive paranormal researcher. He claims to have located Bigfoot somewhere in British Columbia along the Trans-Canada Highway. You can check out his video for yourself, which contains a number of Google Earth images as evidence. Bigfoot has been a mystery for over a hundred years, even before the term Bigfoot was in common usage. It is a common practice for cultures to have some kind of myth concerning the existence of anthropomorphic giants lurking in the woods. Some of them claim that Bigfoot is a cannibal, or that it's nocturnal, or that they would carry children away. But today, the Bigfoot legend is known for the conspiracies that it inspires. So WoW for real does have some pretty good picture evidence for Bigfoot, but who knows. Some commenters have decried the video, claiming that it's just a tree stump or some other forest object, but we may never know for sure. Until then, the mystery stays alive. Mysterious Creature in New Zealand In 2014, one New Zealand engineer named Peter Whitehira was traveling around Oke Bay just off the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand when he claimed to have spotted a giant wake in the water but nothing was found. And now, if you look at Google Earth, you can see for yourself that there was clearly a large disturbance inside of the water. He was only looking for a place to build his vacation home, but he might have uncovered a deep mystery. White Hira claimed that this water disturbance could indicate the existence of a large creature swimming underneath. Based on the size of the wake captured by Google Earth, this creature would have to be somewhere around 36 feet long. This puts whales in the running, but from the length of the wake, we also know that it couldn't be a whale because it was moving way too quickly. Maybe it was a boat? White Hira says otherwise because there's no indication of the kind of white froth that boats leave in their wake. Others have said that it's just the trunk of a tree floating in the water. Maybe, but maybe not. It definitely looks like there's something under the water to me, but you be the judge. Thanks to everyone for watching. Do you think that any of these are fake? Tell me your theories in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more. See you next time!